Hi guys, Katie here from SoMidsy.com. My friend at Cricut has asked me to share with you a sewing tutorial on how to create your very own DIY face mask using the Cricut. First things first, I have to clarify and make sure that everyone is well aware that these are not rated for um, disease control and not considered PPE. So make sure you visit the CDC's website on all of the standards and everything that you need to know about um, cloth face mask. Now that we have that little disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about the supplies and what you'll need to create your very own cloth face mask. You'll need fabric. I happen to have a Riley Blake fabric sampler from Cricut on hand. Um, this is great for the fact that you won't have to cut any of the fabric out for the 12 by 20 format. Um, if you don't have any Cricut fabric samplers on hand, don't stress, use whatever you happen to have on hand. Um, any fabric will do. You'll also need some quarter inch braided elastic. I happen to find um, about a half dozen in my sewing craft stash. This is definitely the time when it's good to be a craft supply hoarder. You'll also want a pair of scissors, um, a pin cushion with pins because I found that I like to pin a few pieces um, toward the end when I'm sewing around the entire um, cloth face mask and attaching it. You'll want, um, if you have a brayer, a brayer's great because this will help smooth and flatten the fabric onto your Cricut sewing mats. You'll want Cricut sewing mats, the pink mats. Um, these are specific for, they are the fabric grip mat and they're specific for fabric. And I have been using my Easy Press Mini like a crazy woman lately with sewing. It's perfect for sewing and getting into the little crevices and areas. Um, if you don't have that, no worries, use an iron, that's totally okay. And then last but not least, your Cricut machine. Today I'm gonna to share with you how to, to make these masks using the Cricut Maker. The beautiful thing about the Cricut Maker is that it cuts a wide variety of fabrics. That's what it's really known for. So when I open it up, you'll notice that um, it has um, a rotary blade. The rotary blade is for cutting fabric. And then, Putting it into, um, in like the slot A area, you can use the washable fabric pen. So basically, you will go on the Cricut Design Space, I'll show you that in a minute. You will select what size uh, face mask you want. There are small, medium adult masks. There are large adult masks. There's also a small children's mask and um, I believe a large children's mask. So there's four different sizes to choose from. It's the same exact concept every single time. It's just a different size. If you go on the Cricut blog post, they also have all the materials listed out for you. They have the sizes of elastic that you will need for each size mask. They've done an excellent job breaking it all out for you. Um, so the Cricut Maker though, will go ahead and it will cut all your fabric out for you. And if you have the washable pen um, to be inserted in, it will also trace out the pattern for you so you know exactly where you need to sew on the lines. It's fantastic, I love it. And I've made now officially, I think 15 of these in the past three days. So I'm excited to share with you today how to make this mask. All right, so we are ready to get started cutting our fabric. So if you go on to Cricut Design Space, you will notice that they have a wide variety of different face mask tutorials now loaded. Um, you'll wanna make sure that if you're using the maker, you select the small, medium, adult face mask. Um, they also have a pattern created just for the Explorer family of machines. That one, you'll notice that there's only um, uh, one of each side one and side two. On the maker, um, you will notice that you get two pieces of each because it's cutting it out and it's also going to draw um, the fabric markings onto it. Um, so side two, I'm gonna grab an example here. So when you see on uh, Cricut Design Space, when you see two and one, 
One is meaning the front, two is meaning the back, the inside. Um, so you could make it all the same color or you could have fun with it like I've been doing and making two, and using two different fabrics. Doesn't matter either way. If um, you are gonna use two different fabrics, you definitely wanna pay attention to which number you're placing um, the fabric onto um, the fabric grip mat. The pattern, the inside two, will go onto a 12 by 12 mat. Now, for the outside, you are going to see in Cricut Design Space um, that it is on two separate mats. There's no need to do that. What you can do is you can change the mat size. When you click on this, you can change the mat size to the 12 by 24. This will then give you only two mats that you're going to have to load instead of three. And you'll notice that it's now placed both onto the 12 by 24 mat. This is great, it's a great time saver. So now that we have that out of the way, um, we're gonna go ahead and select our fabric and place it onto the mat. The first one it's going to, draw, uh, to cut is the inside material. So with that being said, um, I just need to pick an inside material. I'm gonna go with the hearts. And I think I'm gonna use this adorable little, let's see here. Maybe I'll go with the arrows too, cause I like the arrows. I mean, I love all the fabric, it's all super cute. All right, so fabric, put that to the side. We are going to place, and I got a little bit of a tight workspace here, so bear with me. This is real life crafting here. I don't have this amazing craft studio, although this craft room is new to me and I'm excited because I believe next month I'll be partnering with Cricut um, to show you how to do different kind of um, craft room organization with the Cricut Joy. And I just got one of those and it's really awesome. Okay, so on this fabric, you see how it has like like it, the hearts are kind of spaced out. It doesn't really matter. The big thing that matters here, and it, it, it's all preference, but the big thing that matters is that when you're loading the fabric onto the fabric grip mat, you need to make sure that the print side is down. Huge, huge like thing that you have to keep in mind. Um, I definitely made the mistake a few times now, and that's okay too. All right, so I'm gonna line it up the best I can, and then I'm gonna show you how the brayer works, it's amazing. And if you don't have one, obviously you can't run out to the store right now. You could always order it on Cricut. Um, all right, so all I'm doing is pressing it down, you see, and then it's getting rid of all the bubbles. And if there's too many, like right in here, I'm not really happy with that. So I'll just fold this up and then kind of reposition it. It doesn't have to be perfect though. Um, just make sure that there's not a lot of bumps because then it could, um, it could kind of move around. It won't move around your fabric, but it could make a wonky cut, like a little zigzag or edge because it's going by what is loaded on, um, the mat. So you can, I've been kind of keeping it just, um, like this. It's fine. Um, you don't have to worry about it's not gonna go all the way through, um, and you will see. Um, now that that one is there, I'm also gonna go ahead and just do my 12 by 24 as well, since I have the space right now. I'm gonna switch sides. Now you're gonna notice that there's like all this like fabrics, like like the threads and stuff on it. It's actually okay. And they, um, the people at Cricut advise against you scraping off um, all of the threads. I know it's hard because you're so used to wanting to take off all this stuff, but I'm telling you, it's um, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna line this up, and since this is a longer pattern, that's why it's on the 12 by 24. This is gonna be the outside of your face mask, and I'm gonna smooth this out. See, like that, that's not cool. So we gotta make sure that we don't have that, and it's really good if you can pull it tight. That definitely helps. Um, 
like I said, doesn't have to be perfect, and but just enough to where you're not gonna have a lot of imperfections on your fabric on the mat because you wanna make sure you get a nice smooth cut. All right, this, this in itself I feel like is very therapeutic just to use the brayer. <laughs> I'm crazy though, so. All right, that's, it's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna move some stuff around on my desktop so that way we have the room. All right, I'm gonna move my computer over here. We're going to load in, I'm gonna put this one behind me so that I have a little space for right now. We're going to load in the first mat. Actually, I'm gonna hit um, continue. We're going to um, load in the mat. Remember, I'm using a washable Cricut fabric pen, so I'm going to insert it into slot A. I'm actually gonna move this here so that you can see it like it's magic. Um, my machine, I have my machine um, hardwired in. That does not mean that you need to do that. The maker ha is Bluetooth capable, um, so you can use that as well. And I'm just waiting for it to have me select my material on the screen. And I'm selecting cotton. So, and then it shows you, it prompts you what, what tools need to be loaded for this project. Every project, it always does that. I have um, the rotary blade and I have my washable fabric pen. Um, so that everything's loaded, we're on to the inside piece of the face mask. I'm gonna hit the C and I'm gonna let it cut and do its magic. There we have it. Our um, interior piece is cut out and I'm just going to pull the pieces off. Look how awesome it looks. Very exciting. And what I like to do, because I'll start, what I will do typically is I will cut out a bunch all at once, have a nice big stack to the side, and then that's when I start my sewing assembly line. Um, I just find it's quicker. All right, so we'll put this to the side and I'll work on trimming that up while I work on loading the second mat. I'm probably gonna move my computer over a little. We're gonna hit the arrow. Everything is loaded in and we're gonna hit the C so it can cut. There we go. Now we have the outside portion of the pattern. And look at that, it just pulls away with ease. And just pull off the pieces. And I like to put these together too. So now I have the outside piece cut with, um, with the pattern markings and I have the inside piece. So now let's get ready to sew. All right, as promised, it's time to sew now. Um, so I've heated up my Cricut Easy Press Mini here. And the first step you'll want to do is you want to iron out like all these wrinkles and, and lines out of the pattern. So I'll just do that really quickly. I like to kind of try to keep them together. And on both sides, this side definitely has a little bit more. I have it on the highest setting um, and I don't have any issues with you know, it burning fabric or anything, so don't worry. All right, now let's line this one up. This one is definitely has, you know, it had all the creases of the fabric. So I'm gonna have to give it a little more ironing. Okay, that's looking pretty good, that side. Now, you'll wanna keep this hot during the whole time because you'll have to keep pressing different areas. All right. Um, first order of business, so I'm gonna put this to the side. First order of business, we're going to sew, and actually, see, look, I had that the wrong way. I had the print on the outside. You don't want that, the print, 
should be on the inside facing each other and um, the lines should line up and you should easily be able to read your pattern markings. Okay, so the first part we're going to sew is this curved piece right here. That's for the mouth portion in your nose. I'm gonna put this off to the side, still hot. I'm gonna put my sewing machine closer to me. Um, I just have basic white thread, white bobbin, nothing crazy here. I'm just doing um, a straight stitch. And, let's see. All right, and we are ready to sew. So I'll sew um, like three stitches forward, three stitches back. And then I'll follow that blue line. fabric is kind of bunching up here. So don't be afraid to um, put your foot up and then um, put it down to readjust if needed. And I actually, I don't know why, but I'm sewing this. Normally I'd be sewing it on the other side. So don't mind me. Okay, that's to the end. Now three back, three forward and pull my foot up and just, all right. So now this piece is sewn. Um, so next up, we're gonna sew this side and I'm gonna do it the right way for me. So that way my hand isn't all underneath here. I don't know why I started the other one like that. Um, remember, your pattern is facing inside, lined up as perfectly as possible so that your lines line up and place your foot down. Inside the foot, there's a little line. You want your um, blue line to line up with that little tiny opening on the foot um, of your sewing machine here. That's just a fun little tip and fact for you. It's much better, much better. All right. Little back stitch, front stitch. I have a cutting feature on mine, but I don't like it because I tend to lose the thread more. All right, so now we have um, both of the, the, the curved pieces are sewn. Next, you're going to trim off your, um, the strings, always the strings. My big pro sewing tip, I always keep a bowl nearby a friend taught me this years ago and I've just stuck with it and I put all my thread and pieces of fabric in there so that it's not all over my sewing space I have like one little mini trash can next up you're going because this is curved you want to make sure that the fabric is going to um, like bend and move so you want to cut like little pieces of fabric but don't cut the thread um, so there's no really rhyme or reason I had my husband helping me with this the other night and he's like I mean how far apart you don't need to get technical here just cut every I don't know half inch or so all right so that one's done I'm gonna cut off the thread on this one and snip any excess all right and then I just need to cut these You could even, if you want, cut like the little pointed piece there if you want. That's fine too. All right, that's done. Next up, we're going to press. We're going to now um, fold this line in. I'm gonna move my easy press a little closer and carefully watch your hands and you're going to press this line so that you can sew the hem to the inside piece. And I like to try to kind of fold it ahead of time and then have my hand on it and then I carefully kind of move it. All right, so that is 
Um, this is pressed. I'm not like happy with that one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, hopefully, guys, this is not something we're going to have to wear and use for the rest of our life. It's just a temporary. All right. On this one, so let's go ahead. We will sew that. Normally, when I, when I'm batching these out, I'm I'm doing all these at one time. So I'll do like five or ten at one time, and then I'll um, press all these, and then I'll sew them. I can't. I I like to batch work. That's me. All right. So just going to line this up. Another straight stitch. another back stitch front stitch that side's done now let's do this side okay remember to back stitch it's very important so your stitch stays intact done so now we have the seam for um, the outside and we have this curved piece done and don't worry the blue will wash off so don't worry at all all right next up we're going to press um, the outside piece of the mask now I like to press these lines right here because I found the first time I made it that if you don't fold these in prior to folding this area where the elastic is going through, then you see all the raw frayed edge. And I just don't like that. So I'm going kind of an extra step. I was sewing these um, as well, but I've kind of eliminated that after a little trial and error. All right, so now that these two inside pieces are um, flattened, I'm going to align the two blue lines. Now you might not be able to see it that well on the camera, but you just take this blue line and that blue line and you're going to align them and fold them and press. Now, this is where your elastic is going to go through. All right, so I have that pretty well set. I kind of try to hold it it's hot, so be careful. And then I'm going to fold this side. All right, so we're going to press this side and press this side. And then once again, we are folding the blue lines to match the lines together. And it's also good to know to make sure that both of these are pretty even, um, which they should be if you're following the pattern. Okay. All right, we've got enough of a crease to where we can start sewing this portion. All right, all we're gonna do, we're gonna keep this folded and we're gonna do another straight stitch. Remember, this is where your elastic's going. So you wanna kinda of do it as close to the edge as possible. Just a couple extra back stitches. This side is done. We are getting much closer to being able to put this together. Once again, we're going to cut off all the excess thread 
and any others that might be bothering you or fraying or whatever it's doing. Okay. Now, once this is all snipped, I'm gonna snip this side too. Like I mentioned before, I like to batch everything so I'm not constantly stopping. It keeps the flow and pace going. All right, now it's time to put these together. Um, I like to kind of push these out just to make sure that um, everything is folding and moving and then I can kind of crease it to make sure that, you know, I'm really getting all that. All right, so this is the outside of your mask. You're gonna actually keep it folded in. You're going to take the outside of this mask, the outside fabric, um, and put it inside. So both of the printed fabrics will be touching each other. So you'll still have your, um, your pattern lines on the outside to use as a guide. This is where the bobby pins I have found, or the sewing pins, not, not bobby pins, but the sewing pins have come into hand because I like to, just to ensure that they're staying in place, I put a, I put a straight pin on each side. And then it's time to sew all the way around this blue line on each side. Now remember, we're not sewing this. This is where our elastic is going to go in. All right, getting it all set up. And I'm gonna start on this side. Now, because I folded this over, like the inside, to make it so it doesn't have that raw edge, you're going to notice that there's a little overlap. That's okay, I'm gonna start sewing right there and just follow the line down, okay? Straight, another just straight line once again. Very basic sewing, guys. Do not be intimidated. I have not sewn in years and I've been knocking out a bunch of these, so I know that you guys can do it too. I'm gonna kind of move my foot a little, help guide me so I can make the turn better. And now at this point, I typically will take the pins out because now it's all kind of tacked together anyways, so we're good. All right, once again, don't worry about the little bit, the outside and the inside. Just kind of line it up the best you can. Oh, and then backstitch. I hit the wrong button on my machine. So it's all sewn together. So now we're going to take, um, we're gonna take our scissors again. We're gonna cut all the excess thread. Make sure not to cut your fabric. That would be sad. You've done all this work at this point. Okay, trimming all the sides. And now, I think we got everything. Now we are going to flip this, not inside out, I guess right side out would be the right way. All right, so we got what looks like is like the makings of a mask here. Now you'll notice that there's an opening, that's so you can put in a filter. Um, and I like to kind of put it both ways. This is the inside part of your face mask and then I'll flip it and then, I'm 
gonna press again before I sew around um, the edge. So move my Cricut Easy Press Mini. Okay, that side. Just this just helps to kind of smooth out, make sure that the lines are all nice and the fabric lines are all nice and straight and flat together for when you go to sew this last portion. Okay, now I can turn that off. And now we're just going to sew around the edge on both sides, making sure not to sew over this area where the elastic is gonna go in. Once again, sewing a straight line, that's it. I like to start right where um, the line is for the elastic portion. Couple back stitches. Making sure that all the fabric is Looking good. A couple more back stitches. This side done. Okay. All right. Now we have this side to do. There you have it. It's all sewn together. We're gonna cut the threads once more. There you go. Now all we have to do now is add the elastic and sew that and we're done. Alrighty, so now it's time to do the elastic. Um, for the small, medium mass size, um, you're going to want to measure out 18 inches. So I just have a ruler and there's 12 inches right there. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm gonna cut that. I'm going to be honest that this next part is a part that I have kind of um, enlisted my husband in doing because I don't have the best um, grip these days and it kind of hurts my hands. So this is normally what he does. So I might struggle a little, just bear with me. All right, elastic, always, whenever you're threading elastic and sewing, um, or even if like you have, say like a tie for a sweatshirt that, that has come undone and you wanna get it through, the best way is to put it, um, attach a safety pin to it. And it took me a little while to find a safety pin in my house, but I found it. All right, all you're gonna do, put the safety pin, obviously it's gonna to have to be a smaller safety pin, inside the little pocket and start to bunch up so that you can get the safety pin out the other side and You'll want to also start pulling it, you see? And then the only downfall about not sewing the edges of the inside of this uh, thing, because then it's getting stuck, but we'll get it. We'll get there. This is the part that, there we go. See, I got it. 
actually did pretty good, pretty fast. All right, so I'm only gonna pull half of it out. You wanna make sure that this side is not gonna go out the other side. Then keeping it flat um, so that way it's not all bunched up, we're gonna do it the same on this side. And let's see here. I see it. I'm gonna pull this one through. That will help me. And there we go. I got it. Yay. All right. And then you'll also see, like, I got to kind of press that back in. Okay. Now that I have it together, um, make sure that it's not twisted. That's one thing you don't want to have it twisted. So change it in here if I can. Okay, perfect. Nice and straight. All right, I'm going to take the safety pin off and we're going to sew. We're just going to tack um, the two pieces of elastic together. This is where you'll have to do a zigzag stitch. And you do a zigzag stitch because it has a little more give than a straight stitch. Now, two ways to do it. You can just Put it together like this and go under and do it, or you can lay them flat. I'm going to attempt to lay flat. I'm going to be honest. I have a really hard time doing this on my own, and I typically have my husband um, putting the foot down for me. So I'm going to try to give it a go and see where I, how I do here. It's always nice to have a second set of hands, and since a lot of people are home right now, you definitely have the second set of hands. All right, so now we're just going to... Um, Oh, I did not change my stitch. And see, I'm telling you guys to change the stitch. All right, well, at least I did one straight stitch. I do need to change my settings. Um, for mine, for my machine, it's not requiring me to change the foot pedal. Your machine, it might, it just depends. I have a brother. It's keeping me on the J foot pedal. So always um, look at your machine. Um, guide to see what it's showing you. All right, so we're just going to go forward a little and we're going to go back and forward again and we're going to go back just a few times. You want to make sure it's really reinforced well. All right, there we go. That's it. And you're gonna um, snip off all the extra thread again. And I like to, um, you'll see there's like a little bit of a tail. I like to snip that off. I just like to make it as clean as possible. And on the inside too. There you have it guys. We just made a fabric face mask. Um, that also has a portion, a spot where you could put in a filter and I'll show you how beautiful I look in it. So here we go. You can take the back and put it up here to really secure it well. It's nice and snug on the nose, underneath the chin and yeah, and ready to go out grocery shopping or wherever I might actually have to be out at, at a doctor's appointment, you know, whatever. So, gotta take this off so I can talk to you because it kind of muffles you. I hope that I was able to help walk you through how to make this DIY fabric face mask using your Cricut machine. Make sure um, to give this tutorial a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or concerns and head over and visit sewitzy.com for other craft and sewing tutorials.